thing. So then that when you like speak, it's like a mindset that yeah. I think you have to have being an indie producer of any any type yeah. of mentality. What's something that you've kind of I think that is like a nugget that you think someone watching this is like, this is how you move, this is how you can really get stuff done. I think humility is a big one. That's something that I kind of relate yeah. to. But what's something that you think is like your jewel on how you be able to maneuver and get stuff done independently? Um Programming yourself to, to, to realize everything will fail before it works, right? And um, being prepared for war internally, right? So in other words, what does that mean? That means, you know, when you do stuff like this independently, um, this, this business is not designed for us. So my dad never worked in the entertainment business. My dad never owned a company. My dad never owned a business. My dad never went to school. He worked in a steel mill for 30 years, right? My mom, the same exact thing. So when we take our journey into this type of business, or we take our journey into entrepreneurship, and we're trying to own and create, right? Most times with African-American people, we get one opportunity, and once we fail once, we usually don't have enough energy or money to do it again. So it always becomes that story. Like, yeah, I tried to close the line one time, man, I lost the, right? I tried to do the movie, man, they really wasn't. So my mindset has always been, you gonna get, you gotta have 10 tries, right? So you gotta be prepared to lose, lose again, lose again, but at the same time, keep your heart and your mind sharp to understand that's what you're fighting. If it was easy, everyone would do it. So when I when I frame myself and, and put my brain into like, okay, what are you gonna do film wise? That's kind of like what has happened with me. And you guys probably don't know any of the stuff I've been doing, but this is why I could tell you next year, 2018, I'll have three major theatrical releases. What I'm trying to be is the poster child for you can do it, if that makes sense. Um, that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for all the people that, was, that told me no. I'm fighting for all the companies, you know, that looked at me multiple times that I knocked on the door and was like, no, we cool. That's not a good idea. But then I see my idea on their network seven months later, just with a little bit of a twist, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm, I'm fighting for that. I'm fighting for the basketball player, right? The young kid like I was from Gary, Indiana that thought basketball was my entire life, but not realizing till later that it was basically just a vehicle to get me to where I was supposed to be going, yeah. right? So what I try to do a lot of times, man, is articulate and tell people how I got here. You know what I mean? It's not it's not magic, right? It's not, oh, you so dope, you did, you know, it's, no one seen me in an art class and was like, he's the next one. Look at the way he did that W. Like, no, I just, this is like work, man. Like I get up every morning, I work on my craft, I watch film, I study film, I try to figure out what's dope, what's not. I don't try to emulate anyone. Um, so a lot of times, like I'm as honest as I could possibly be here telling you that the first Meet the Blacks, although it hit a home run and we loved it and it was dope and it was fun and we did it, I wasn't happy in terms of what I delivered in terms of how it looked. So now I'm back so I can put it together and make it be what it's supposed to be. So on this one, folks, is like, yo, that that's my favorite movie. I, I, I hear, you know I've heard that a lot with the first one, but I want that same audience now to come back and be like, that's that's what we talked about. <laughs>